Welcome to Celebrating Act Two and our special guest, John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. Hi, John. How are you? I am very, very well. I'm on my third glass of water this morning. <laughs> hey, John, it's good to see you again. I am a big, uh, a big fan of your virtual gourmet newsletter. Everybody should know about it, by the way. And it's free at johnmariani.com. But recently you had a wonderful article in there, a very personal article about why I call it a screed. You ranted about why you don't like to recommend restaurants to friends. <clears throat> and I thought I have to have you uh, repeat that because first of all, it, it sounded like you were getting this all off your chest. It's been there for a long time. Oh. So you must feel good about it. <laughs> but also a lot of good logic behind it. Uh, I mean, here you are, world traveler, professional restaurant reviewer, um, food and travel writer, and people ask you for advice. Where can I go uh, for a great restaurant? And then they proceed to ignore it. So tell us about, tell us about that. Well, first of all, I give advice 52 weeks a year in my writing. So if you yes. want to go on the virtue of Maya to Forbes and you happen to be going to uh, Tuscany and uh, Florence, uh, you're likely to find my um, my reviews there. And this is where I think you should go. So you might want to look them up. They're in the archives. Just go to www.johnmariani.com and subscribe yourself free of charge. And there's an archive and you can look. Oh, yes. He, you know, just got back from London. Uh, but when somebody including close close friends query me i am going to london where should i eat and i say unlike a doctor who says call my office i can't quite do that or a lawyer call my office you know that sort of thing i got this thing here yeah call my office all right well you can't call my office so you can email and i'm i used to be happy to oblige but now it's become so frustrating and so futile because I will say, first of all, I've learned to say, what exactly kind of restaurant are you looking for? What neighborhoods will you be in in London? How long are you staying? Do you want a memorable experience at a great old hundred year old restaurant in London like Wilton's or Rules? Do you want a trendy new spot? Um, just what are you looking for? And uh, so they answer back and invariably, we like Italian food. Fine. OK, great, great, great restaurants in London for Italian food. Uh, so I suggest a couple of those. And I said, you might want to check out one of the old places like like Wilton's. It's really very, very British sort of thing. <clears throat> so I give them six or seven ideas. So they come back a couple of weeks later and uh, talk. So, we, so where'd you eat? Oh, we ate it. We, we went to this Indian restaurant in Soho. It was it was so good. We ate there three times. And <laughs> so well, what about those other places? Oh, you know, we were just walking around and we get back. Sometimes we ordered room service and uh, we were over at a friend's house and they invited us to this wine bar. And I'm saying, fine, don't ask next time. One example that really drove me, can I say peed off? was a friend of mine who is a sometimes restaurant critic, but a food writer and many food books and been all over the world. And his wife was a wonderful woman, good friends, coming to New York and they said, it's a loaded question. Is Barbetta any good? You know, uh, they may have writ written my article on Barbetta. Barbetta is an Italian restaurant in New York that was back to 1906 in the same family. So there's a bit of consistency going on there. It is a Piemontese restaurant, which means you can get a lot of different Italian foods. But if you go with the Piemontese specials, like Vitello Tonato and, and other things, oh, you're going to really, really eat well. And I said, OK, so they go. A couple of days later, Barbara calls me and, said, and uh, says, oh, how was Barbetta? She says, well, I don't know, we weren't too impressed. Why not? Well, you know, we, we weren't all that hungry. We had a big lunch. So I just ordered the salad and, and Steve just had, he, he wanted spaghetti with a red sauce. And you didn't think it was all that good. Well, it wasn't very special. It wasn't very special. 
Well, first of all, it's a 1906 interior. It's, it's, it's a car you'll never, never see before. And it's a gorgeous restaurant. And they take really good care of you. And you ordered a freaking salad and spaghetti with red sauce at this place. I mean, this is this is preposterous. You know, so now I get this all the time. And so it is very frustrating. And as I said, it is futile to try and do it. So what can I say at this point? Uh, people will ask me a question and I'll say, uh, why don't you go to my website? I'll tell you exactly where to go. I have a whole, whole story, two weeks on, on London. You should pay, go, go, go and pay for that. Over with, okay? <clears throat> or if you're a very, very good friend, uh, you might ask me, and I say, again, I, I want to be very, very specific. But now I say, please, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you this information, and uh, I, I uh, uh, please don't come back and say you didn't go to a single one of the restaurants. It's, it's kind of offensive, you know. You, know, you just went to Broadway. What play should I see on Broadway? Oh, go see Hello Dolly, and they come back and they don't. They go see uh, In the Heights or something. Um, well, then don't ask me, okay? Also, they think, could you make a call for us? Oh, boy, no. Could you make a call for my cousin who has never been to this fancy restaurant you rave about and put in a good word for him and get him a good table? I said, are you kidding me? First of all, I would never do that. I don't even do it for myself. Okay? I'm never going to call the most popular restaurant in any city and try to get in on a Saturday night. Even if I know the owner, it's just not fair to do. But you get to ask this all the time. You know, um, the other thing is that uh, they go to the restaurant I recommended, thank God, and they come back and uh, they say, um, well, we don't like it very much. Why not? No, we have a lousy table. What, what table did you get? Where was it? Well, it wasn't one of the A tables up uh, near the front on the banquettes. I said, why should you expect to get one of the A tables if that's what you perceive to be the A tables when 90% of the tables in the restaurant are not going to be A tables? Why should you, a non-regular, get such a table and, and then come back and criticize the restaurant? So for all those reasons, I've pretty much stopped. Um, unless you can guarantee me you will go to one of these restaurants and sometimes if I really feel you're earnest about it and I know the owner very well, all I will do is I will say, John is coming with his wife, Art is coming with his wife, and um, they're just two good friends of mine. Just give them a little TLC. That's the most I will do. But so help me if they don't come back and they don't go. Um, they don't get no more TLC from me. They get a big kiss in the ASS. <laughs> Well, it's not easy because everybody's taste is different. I mean, yeah. it's one thing to read your articles and salivate over your writing and your trips and the wonderful restaurants you review. But it's really another thing when you're walking around a strange city and, you know, you're not quite at home and you're feeling different and, just, and you don't know what you're, you don't know what you're feeling like, you know? So you're right. Most people are going to, fall back on what the concierge recommends. Oh, people have, have come coming to New York and they, what's a great steakhouse? And I said, oh, we got like you know, half a dozen of had a name, name, I'm laying them for them. Then they come back and I said, so where'd you eat? Where'd you go to which steakhouse? Oh, we went to Ruth's Chris, which is a chain out of New Orleans. Oh, we went to Morton's because we like the Morton's, which is a chain right. out of Rhode Island. Um, oh, Don Shuler, you know, he was such a great football coach, which is a chain out of Clearwater, Florida. Hmm. Did you see the Empire State Building? Yeah. Yeah. So oh, uh, anyway, 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 to get your blood pressure down a little bit, uh, maybe you can uh, recognize that. Uh, and this is not putting anybody down. Most people don't have your kind of background and your kind of appreciation for some of the finer things that probably make your experience in these uh, places that you could recommend. Uh, uh, you get a certain sense of it that most people just don't have that breadth of knowledge. So I think your best thing is go to uh, johnmariani.com, pick your favorite city, and you, you've reviewed everything there. And if people want to do that, fine. But if not, 
they're probably just not either willing to spend the kind of money for what you know is a superior experience because you have something to judge it by. It's not so much that all because, as I said, I give them these questions. What kind of place? Trendy place. And I always ask, what do you want to spend? Um, do you eat seafood? You like seafood? I'm not much on seafood. Okay, do you like Indian restaurants? No, my husband hates Indian food. I'm never going to send them to those restaurants. So tell me exactly. What do you want? And they say, invariably, Italian or French bistro or something like that or a great steakhouse. Nobody asked me for the three-star French restaurants uh, for the simple reason that they probably know they exist that could go there if they wanted to, uh, unless they ask me. If they say, what's the best French restaurant in uh, in Paris? I'll give them a, a list. And then I know that there are probably some kind of civilized people who are going to know which fork to use. Um, but no, I always, always ask, uh, what's the best pizza? You know, which is very, very uh, subjective. But so, OK, what kind of pizza do you like? Do you like thin crust? Do you like Neapolitan? Do you like Sicilian style? Um, what kind do you like, like with gourmet topping, so to speak? Um, so, yeah, I always ask those questions, but no more. <laughs> well, I can't say that I blame you. And, John, I want to thank you for ranting about it in your newsletter, because that's... I feel so much better. I, I loved it. Well, you're welcome back to the Feel Good channel any day of the week. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.